The history of video games dates back to arcades. Arcades date back to carnivals, and some of the earliest so-called arcade games took the form of shooting galleries. These are places with moving targets, a point system, and a theme in many cases. So it's fair to say video games themselves owe a lot to shooting galleries, and arcades have long been home to light gun games or their mechanical equivalents. For home consoles, light guns were sometimes included in Pong-style machines or standalone shooting gallery units. But it wasn't until the era of Nintendo and its zapper with Duck Hunt that the console era of light gun games skyrocketed into popularity. The zapper itself was based on a lot of tech that came before it, but Nintendo used the way cathode ray tube televisions drew their images onto screens to create a much more accurate light gun than had largely come before, and one that would work well given a smaller target, like a television screen of the mid-1980s. The NES zapper combined with the real-world toy craze of laser tag to create a bit of a market boom in the 1980s for light guns. And Atari came out with the XG1, designed in large part for the XE computer line, but also compatible with the Atari 2600 and 7800. The 7800 got about a half dozen light gun games, including Alien Brigade, which is a real standout in the collection. Sadly, for the 2600, we just got Sentinel, which is okay, but just one game. As with most light gun games, the screen scrolls and things pop out, run out, and shoot at you. You shoot back and try to take as few hits as possible. Eventually you die and can start again. It's pretty basic, but the fun comes from how well the game's developers hit the softer targets. Like easy but challenging fun, and accurate shooting that feels good within the limits of the tech. The NES Zapper was known for being pretty accurate, and the XG1 less so. Alien Brigade makes up for that issue by having loose hitboxes on targets. It works well for the most part, although there are times when you need to hit enemies and not your friendlies standing nearby that it can get a bit frustrating. This is a game that clearly owes a lot to the classic rail shooter Operation Wolf, but that's not a bad thing because Alien Brigade is also a lot of fun to play. Sometimes playing these games without a light gun makes them nearly impossible, but Alien Brigade works fine with a modern or classic controller. There's a nice variety of backgrounds, you can play one of four difficulties. Once you've played the game for a while, you can tear through the levels pretty quickly. As usual, the VCS release does not include a manual, so you'll need to search online and read up on how scoring and such works. Probably the most important bit is how to switch weapons and answer calls with a joystick. You move the cursor to the top of the screen, then use the button to swap weapons, or move over to the radio to get your mission. Alien Brigade is a standout in the 7800 lineup, and it's one of the better light gun games of the late 80s and early 90s. Light guns themselves kept going well into the PlayStation era, only to be largely replaced by motion controllers and infrared sensors like those on the Wiimote. But light gun games continue to be released on PC and in the virtual reality space in particular. As with Atari's other Flashback Friday releases, this game is already available for free on Antstream Arcade, so you'll be paying $3 for a local download of the ROM. As with the other 7800 releases, the ROM seemed perfect. Alien Brigade is single player only. Thanks for watching. All of more 7800 videos in the coming weeks while we wait for Food Fight, Breakout Recharged, and more to be released. Liking the channel helps spread the word, and subscribing gets these videos in your feed. Have fun!